It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I want to talk about a pretty nice little tool that you can use for getting SSH work done. I know that you can SSH in through the terminal anytime you want to and you can use commands to move files around and SCP and rsync and all that kind of stuff but sometimes you just want a nice graphical interface to make things a little bit easier maybe do things in a multi-select kind of way and just make it so much simpler to, to move stuff around. So I was looking around for something like this and I came across this uh, application called Snowflake, which is now being renamed to Muon. And, and this probably happened a while ago, but when I found it, I, I found it as Snowflake. Uh, but it's being re renamed as Muon SSH Terminal, and it's an SFTP SSH Terminal client, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty small package from what I can tell. I believe it's Java-based, uh, but it's got some installers and things like that that are pretty easy to use. And you can kind of see here what it looks like, and they've got a little video that you can run through to kind of understand how it works. It's not very long. It's a few minutes there. Um, and then you've got uh, basically everything that you want, the intended audience, how it works, downloads, just so many little simple things. And, and this has a Windows installer. You've got your Ubuntu slash Debian Deb installer. You've got your Linux generic installer. You've got Mac OS to be determined. Now, this has not had an update in about two years, so I'm guessing that they've either just stopped working on it or they didn't find the people that they needed to help them work on it. I don't know, but being Java based, maybe somebody else can jump in and, and help out with it. Uh, but there is also the jar files. If you want to just go download the code, you may could actually make this thing work with Mac. So I want to show it today because I think it's a pretty nice little tool. It's a real easy to use, simple utility. One thing about it that I'm not wild about is that it does use uh, pretty small fonts and I haven't found a way to change that yet. That doesn't mean it's not there. It just means I haven't found it yet. Uh, but be aware of that. If you have a uh, low vision, this may not be a great tool for you unless you're a screen reader or you, you can rescale your, your screens and stuff like that. And, and maybe that would affect this and help out a little bit. So I'm going to go back up to the top here and I'm going to go to the releases area. And you can see here 104, the merge pool request and, and everything like that. You can kind of look at the dates and see when things happened. Um, you just don't know sometimes. But here we've got the deb, and I'm running a, a Ubuntu-based version with Pop! OS, so I'm just going to grab this deb, so I'm just going to click on it. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love doing this channel. I love making this media and this content for you. I hope you enjoy it as well. I do post all of the videos now over at Patreon after one of my patrons made the suggestion and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me before that but if you're interested in seeing them through Patreon and getting a notification through Patreon instead of through YouTube or hoping that YouTube's algorithms happens to show it to you jump over and become a supporter on Patreon patreon.com I've got the links in the description and the show notes I appreciate your support thank you so much and it's gonna pop up and ask if I want to save it which I do so I'm just gonna save that deb file it's already come down so I'm just gonna open up my terminal now you could just double click the deb file as well so if you open up your files project a lot of times you could just double click the deb file and it'll install but I like to do it in the terminal because if I run across any issues with the installer the terminal will tell me what that is and I'll know that I need to run an extra command and we'll, we'll kinda go through that if we need it so I'm gonna cd into my downloads and I'm gonna say ls just to find it because I think it's under muon but it might be under snowflake still yeah, still under Snowflake, even though they said it's going to be renamed. So we need to, you just need to be aware of that. So we'll clear this out. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. And we're going to do dpackage, or sudo, because I'm not logged in as root. dpkg-i, and then the name of the file. And it's going to ask for my user password. And it's going to try to install that thing. And really all you're watching for here is any errors. In this case, we didn't get any, so that's great. So we, we don't have to do any extra steps. Had we gotten any errors, it's usually going to be a dependency error that says, hey, there's a dependency that's not met, and it's not going to be installed with dpackage, so you need to do something. And if that ever happens, you just do sudo apt install dash f, hit enter. It's going to prompt you to say, are you sure you want to do this? Just hit yes, and then hit enter. It'll install those things, and then just rerun that dpackage command up at the top and you're set. So we can exit right out of that and now I'm gonna bring up Snowflake and here it is right here the Snowflake SSH client and you see it pops up full screen and there's really nothing more to the screen than what you see here. What we're gonna do is create a new connection 
And you see it opens up this little tree, so you can basically kind of create connection groups if you want to. So you can create folders and then create connections inside of those folders. So you can kind of make this pretty nice, especially if you're connecting to a lot of different servers or SSH clients, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to call this my media server. My host is 192.168.10.26. And the port is 22. So if you're using a different port for some reason for SSH, just remember to change that port as well. I'm going to put in my user. And then you do have the option to put in the password, but you can also use a key if you already have your, your user key set up on that device. And then my local folder, I'm going to set as slash home slash Brian. The remote folder in this case is actually the same. It may not be all the time, so just know that you can set up different folders. And then if you have your private key file, like I said, you could actually select a private key to log in instead of using your password if you want to. So I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. Once you connect, you're going to get a message the first time you run this. And it's that same message you get in the terminal when you do SSH that says the authenticity of this thing uh, it has never been checked before. Are you sure you trust it? And in this case, you want to say yes. If you don't trust it, say no, but you should if you're the one setting up the connection. So once you say yes, you'll see that you get logged in. And I can see here what's on the remote system and what's on my local system. So the local system's on the right, the remote system is on the left. Now, if I want to move one of these files over to this side, I can do that pretty easily. So if we just look at navigation first, here you can see there's navigation kind of built in. So you've got the back, the forward, the up, one level, the down. Go to the, go to the home folder and then click back into my other folder. So I'm just moving around there on the remote machine, just like I would if I was in the terminal, except I'm using a mouse and I'm clicking. Now, if you go to the system monitor, you can click on start monitoring. This is just going to look at the system resources. And then if we click on processes, we can see what processes are working. So it's kind of like a little view of top or H top, for instance, but it's giving it to you in a graphical way. And then over here, you can change the timing of how often it updates. So you can see here, it's pretty flat, pretty level. We can look at the disk space analyzer. So we can click on that as well. And you can kind of see what it looks like here. So this is just showing me different drives that I've got attached to my remote system there. And I can kind of see what the usage looks like for those drives. So here, SDA and SDB, these are the ones that I care about. These three right here, really. And these are my media folders and media drives that I actually use. And you can kind of see how much space is being used on them. So that's a nice feature. If we had any active transfers, we could look at that as well. So we'll start a transfer here in just a minute and check that out. So let's do one of these files that's kind of big. Um, so I'm just going to drag this over to my home folder. So I'm just going to click and drag. I'm going to let go. It's going to ask, are you want, do, you, do you want to do this? Uh, and it says move or copy files. Yes, no cancel. So I'm going to say yes. It's going to say transfer normally or transfer in the background. So I'm just going to say normally. That's fine. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to start this transfer. So if I want the one from yesterday and this one, I can drag both of these over. You see I multi-selected by holding down the control key and click on the ones I want. Again, I can say yes. And this one I'm going to say transfer in the background. I'm just going to say yes. And we'll go over here. And now we can see we've got active transfers going. So it shows you the progress of those transfers and what's moving and how fast it's moving. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty great. While that's going, we can look at the Linux tools. So we'll just go ahead and click on this. And again, you can see it's, it's acting on media server. So here we get system information about our remote machine. We can see services that are running. So very cool. Our transfer is done. We should be able to see those files over here. Maybe I just need to refresh my view. Oh yeah, I just needed to refresh. So the view didn't refresh after they finished, but there they are. All of my files have moved over. Everything looks good. So be aware of that. Sometimes you might move things. You might just need to kind of move around a little bit to refresh the view. So on this side, you can see I don't have any Nextcloud Docker. And here on my local machine, I do have a Nextcloud Docker folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag this over. It's going to ask me if I want to transfer, and I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to say transfer normally, that's fine, and we'll say OK. Now that was pretty fast. Here it is right at the top. We can click in, and then we can click in here to compare. And we have a data folder, we have a data folder. There's nothing in them, 
but you can see that it did copy over the structure, everything like that, like we expect. So it's got a recursive copy that happens as well, which is pretty nice. So there you go. If you're looking for a nice, simple SSH client and you really want something that's just a GUI that lets you do multi-select and easily copy things back and forth, drag them back and forth, I think this is a really nice, nice system. It's very easy to install. It's very light. It's very small. Um, it runs well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along in the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.